Welcome to HRN HQ. It's Oaks Derby Week at DeRosa, Sarah Albadwi. Sarah, we've been talking about these races, particularly the Derby, for months now. It's finally all happening this week, and it's not a bet I always zero in on, but I wanted to do this video because I'm very excited for the Kentucky Oaks Kentucky Derby Double this year. Well, I think in regards to past years, this is a year where I think you can find some value in each of these races because especially in the Kentucky Derby, I see this as a more contentious race than some might have seen in the past. There have been some very heavy, very likely favorites in the past. And while the favorites certainly deserve their credibility and likelihood to win this year, I think that there's some more opportunities for some long shots. Obviously, you agree. I do indeed. And uh, put together a handy chart in the points era, which dates back to the 2013 editions. Derby won by Orb that year. And for the most part, the Oaks Derby double does pay more than the parlay. There are two exceptions to that. Not too bad, though. Uh, never really negative value in the Oaks Derby double. But the interesting thing I thought was in the two instances with 280 combinations, which is 14 horses in the Oaks, 20 in the Derby. Both those additions did produce a positive expectation on the double versus the win parlay. That's the situation now pending a lot of scratches. We need several horses out to get below 20 in the Derby, 1A in the Oaks as well. But I think this year there's the obvious contenders. If you use them all, that's trouble. But I have some pretty strong opinions in the Oaks about which ones I want and which ones I don't. Absolutely. And I think the biggest thing that stands out to me early on with just a glance at this chart is that if you're right about one of the races and you use a favorite or a shorter price in the other with a bit of a long shot in one of those legs, the payouts are astronomical yes. in comparison to what they would be with just a win wager or in a variety of other multis or things like that. So if there's bombs away in one, even with the favorite in the other, you're still getting a significant amount of value for your wager. You absolutely are, and hopefully I will be in my wager. I know I'm a little more bullish on this particular bet than you are, and I think that stands to reason because you actually have a very strong opinion about one horse in particular in the Oaks, whereas my opinion, there's four obvious contenders here, uh, Morning Line favorite Nest, Kathleen O, Echo Zulu, Secret Oath in that order, Morning Line. Two I like, two I don't. So my strategy is I'm taking the two I like, and trying to hook them up in the Derby. We'll start with the one you really like. I don't necessarily disagree. We don't agree very often, but we do on this one. Absolutely. Kathleen O just seems like a superstar in the making, and I don't use that lightly. <laughs> with her running style and closing from so far back in a variety of races at different distances, at Gulfstream, at Aqueduct, versus different levels of competition, to me, that's just not something you see be a successful tactic in a lot of races. Usually you want to be sitting close early or on the front end, and that's what wins races. For her to have the ability to close from so far off of it and to be so push button in a way with the way that she is ridden, Javier Castellano tells her where to go, when to stop, when to wait, and she just listens, and you can see that happening. For a horse to be so responsive, I think that all of those qualities add up to a really big performance that we're going to see from her on Friday. There's a lot of really talented fillies in this field, but I think that she's the best one of all. I agree. And uh, not to the point, though, that I won't also use Nest. And yes, Nest is the morning line favorite. Might actually be the post-time favorite. I could see it being Echo Zulu. Maybe Kathleen O wouldn't shock me, but I'd say she's least likely of the three. And while Secret Oath is kind of in that tier of the four logicals, I think we can agree she's definitely not going to be the favorite. I would agree with that, yes. So Kathleen O on both our, well, on my ticket, more win bet for you. And then Nest is the other one. And I feel comfortable using two of the very logicals because I do have a stronger opinion in the Derby on a price. And basically the reason I'm excited about this Oaks Derby double is I'm hoping with either Nest or Kathleen o winning, it'll put me in a real good shape of knowing on Derby Day some of the scenarios I can have happen with maybe a big will pay to either Tis the Bomb or Pioneer of Medina. And I haven't decided if I'm going to bet one, well, bet Tis the Bomb a little more than the other, or just call it a two by two and be done with it and see where that happens. Hidden Connection, I'll use a little bit as well. I don't want to get beat by the horse that almost took it to the champ in the fairgrounds oaks and i think those will pays will be huge admittedly that's just more of a i think it's an overlay hedge play don't want to get beat 
I'm definitely sending it in on the is Nest the four. Yeah. So yeah. four ten with nine eleven is my big Oaks Derby double play. I like it. And Nest obviously major breakout performance in the Ashland last time out. That winning margin, not something we have seen in recent years. Todd Fletcher obviously very capable. If you were going to include perhaps one more horse outside of Hidden Connection, Nest, and Kathleen O, is there anyone that you'd be attracted to immediately or anyone that comes to mind? Uh, I would say Goddess of Fire for me would be the next one. Um, I'm definitely not at all using Echo Zulu and Secret Oath, even with Tis the Bomb, knowing that if Echo Zulu and Tis the Bomb come in, it's going to be a nice double. This is my take a stand on my strong opinion. And if I'm right, cash big, you know, no other than the hidden connection, which I think will be a huge number. Uh, I'm not hedging with Tis the Bomb just because he's a price. So sticking with the top two mostly. But I do think uh, the other, well, he has two others, but one of the other Pletchers, I think, could offer. That's one I'm going to watch the will pays. That's fair enough. I think that more speaking in terms of exactas, trifectas, even maybe oh, the super. Absolutely got us a fire underneath. Yes. Yeah, that's where I'd be looking. And the one that I'd be looking at next after that would actually be Bente Valentine. We spoke to one of the people kind of involved with her a little bit yesterday, not fully cranked up for that last race. I think that she could possibly have a big effort in here. She's going to be a decent price. And if you're looking for someone to split those big four as far as the morning line goes and as far as what the general public thinks is the big four, that would be the first one that I want to use, but a very talented group of fillies that we're seeing face off. I think it's kind of like the year where it was all the Gamine Swiss skydiver, and then here comes She Dares the Devil. So it would be very interesting to see another one of these fillies step up and be a, a kind of surprising winner, but they can surprise me and knock me out of whatever wagering pools I'm all in on Kathleen. Yeah, this this is a race I um, just decided it's going to be one of my stands, and I'm a little more liberal in mine because I have a, a price to go with Nest. But Kathleen O is my top pick. And in the Derby, I know you're not as into this double as I am. But would you say, you know, if you were to look at the Will Pays and maybe can be swayed with Kathleen O, would you be looking to just really go narrow with your top picks in the Derby? Or is your opinion on Kathleen O something that maybe you leverage? And if one of the 30 to 1 horses you like wins, that adds a little extra to you. Well, I think if you're going with a horse that's going to be a shorter price than one of them, you would want to try to hook them up with a horse that's going to be a bit more of a price in the other one. I don't think that that 10-10 double, while it could happen, is really going to offer any significant value to anybody because Andy and Kathleen O will be such short prices. That's right. kind of a fun upstart 10-10 double. Um, but I think that if you were looking for the horse in the derby to pair with Kathleen O, on my ticket it probably would be charge it i think that that 20 to 1 morning line is an absolute pipe dream but i don't see him going off as one of the top couple of choices in the wagering at least in the top maybe four choices of the right. wagering in comparison okay. to others so even enough of a long shot in him paired up with her for the double i think it produced enough of a value uh play for me um but I don't have a super strong long shot like you do going into the Derby with Tiz the Bomb. Mine, unfortunately, is scratched out with a bruised foot. So as many, including yourself, have said, I actually get to save some money. I, say, I think so, but uh, you were the only one who was uh, looking deep. And we'll get more long shot looks, I believe, from Mike Shuddy. You have a yes, video coming yep. with him. Uh, you and I and Mark did a podcast with Ron Flatter, deep deep dive oh, into yeah. the uh, Each individual into the Kentucky Derby field. So check that out. Uh, and we'll be back sometime later this week with, I don't know if we decide on which pick five, but some multi-race wager on Saturday. But it's pretty rare. I'm this excited about a two-day double. Uh, and I know, you know some of my advanced horse playing friends are not fans of the double anyway, especially over two days. But I just think with this many combos, and certain horses that I don't like at all at three, four, five to one, uh, it's a spot to take a shot, and I'm going to take mine. All right, and I wish you the best of luck if you win. We know that you'll be buying some office pizza for all of us, so I'll be happy to cheer you on. All right, yeah, I don't know if the double itself will get to pizza territory, but I would have to think if I hit with Tiz the Bomb, that would trigger hopefully some other payoffs that oh. would thus Absolutely. bring pizza to the office. All right, that's Sarah Ahmed. That's our Oaks Derby Double Thoughts. Plenty more content coming throughout the week. Stay tuned.